Welcome to Advent of You, challenge number 11. We're going to be revisiting a previous challenge, challenge number 4, where we built a Christmas tree. The goal of this challenge is to decorate it with these nice decorations. There are a bunch of ways to solve it, I'm going to show you how I solved it, and then we're going to compare it to the author's recommended solution. We're going to be talking a little bit less about Vue, and a whole lot more about Tailwind CSS in this particular challenge, uh, one of my favourite tools which I'm enjoying more and more, and every day I'm learning new tricks with it. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tricks today and how I'm going to animate this using Tailwind CSS. Let's go ahead now and get started. Just as a quick reminder, this is my previous solution. I used a nested for loop with this inline ball element. It is a JSX element, uh, but I really like having these inline elements sometimes, especially when they're going to be this simple and we're not going to be reusing them outside of this component. The first thing I'm going to do is make this a bit more readable. Uh, one of the side effects of Tailwind is these lines tend to get very long. And the way I usually solve that is just by making them multi-line strings. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to wrap it in curly braces. I'm going to change this to be back ticks. And then we can just go ahead and inline them. Uh, if I was work working on a more complex production system, I'd probably put a little bit more thought into how I'm grouping these. At the moment, I'm just kind of arbitrarily grouping them, uh, which is going to be fine for now, but just a little bit of a tip uh, because Tailwind can get a little bit messy if you're not careful. Finally, we're going to go ahead and add an extra div in here. And this is where we're going to be styling our, our twinkling little balls. I'm going to use these curly braces with the back ticks. And then we're going to go ahead and start decorating these. We're going to give them a height and width of two. And then we're going to say a background of yellow. Let's say 300. Uh, this is the author's solution. Let's change to mine now. <laughs> it's not looking quite as good, but we are getting there. I'm going to make them a little bit lighter. Maybe 100 or 200 looks pretty good. And they're also going to be circles. So I'm going to say rounded. Finally, things are looking a little bit better. Just going to go ahead and space these out as well. Now we're going to focus on the next step, which is going to be animation. As we can see with the original author's solution, uh, the animations are not uniform, they're sort of staggered. So we're going to try and achieve that. Uh, before we do, we're just going to get everything blinking and then we're going to move forward from there. Uh, the first thing we're going to see is how you traditionally do this. And then we're going to convert it to Tailwind and see how much more concise it can be. Uh, the first thing we need to do is have a class to, to style this. So I'm going to go ahead and create one called light. Let's go ahead and add the light class down here. And it is going to need to be animated. So we're going to go ahead and create some keyframes. I'm going to call this one twinkle since I'd like them to twinkle. We're going to go ahead and define both the start and the end state for this animation, which is going to be the zeroth and 100% state. Uh, inside of here, we're going to go ahead and just say opacity is equal to one. Finally, at the halfway state, I'd like the opacity to be zero. Let's go ahead now and apply this class to, or the animation rather, to the class. I'm going to say animation is going to be twinkle. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it every second, and I'm going to do it forever, so infinite. Uh, if I didn't do everything, anything incorrectly here, saving this off should give us a nice animation, and so it does. I'm kind of surprised I managed to type that correctly the first time, usually make a mistake, but I guess everything is going according to plan. The next thing we're going to do is move this to Tailwind CSS. Uh, we can do quite a bit with inline styling in Tailwind, but there are some limitations, and one such limitation is keyframes. What we can do, however, is move this to our Tailwind configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one, head over to Tailwind, and paste it inside of here to be converted. We're going to extend our default theme, and I'm going to go ahead and add an animation via keyframes, and it is going to be called Twinkle. Finally, we're going to go ahead and write almost exactly the same thing, we're going to go and start with the start and end state. So 0%, 100%. And this one's going to have an opacity of 1. Finally, as you might expect, we have to do 50% as well. Go ahead, throw it in, and this is going to be 0. You can see these are almost 1 to 1. They are very similar. Finally, if we did everything correctly, this is actually going to break because we haven't applied this animation. Now that we've done that, let's head back to Tailwind and apply the animation. So we're going to attempt to convert all of this into Tailwind. We don't need the style tag anymore, so I'm going to delete that, head up here, and just comment this out so we can see what we're looking at while we type. Uh, yeah, the animation uh, syntax is a little bit tricky. What you need to do is say animate, pass in a hyphen, and we're going to use these square brackets, which is going to allow us to do arbitrary values, such as the ones we defined in our Tailwind configuration. What I can do is apply twinkle here. We're going to replace the white space with underscores, so it's going to become twinkle, we're going to do it for one second and we're going to do it forever. If I save this off now, everything should be working exactly the same and so it is. Let's go ahead and delete that. 
Uh, this is quite a little bit more concise and we've done everything inside of this class. So you can see exactly what's going on. We could also go and change this. For example, we want, might want to have 200 milliseconds. That's going to work as well. Uh, you can use whatever value here you'd like to. These are arbitrary, so they're not something hard coded in Tailwind. They are going to be compiled in a just in time fashion. So now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is kind of stagger these a little bit, both the animation and the position. What we're going to do is start off with the animation time. We're going to use something called animation delay. And unlike things like animate uh, and BG background, rounded and these sorts of other classes, this is not built into Tailwind. We have to actually do something called using an arbitrary property. I uh, just to clarify, I'm going to show you the documentation here. They have the arbitrary value documentation. That's what we've been using. You have the name of the property here and then you use square brackets. And you can actually do something similar for almost every CSS class. Scrolling down here, we have arbitrary properties. The entire thing is wrapped in square brackets. And this is basically going to be translated directly into CSS. We need to use this because Tailwind does not support animation delay, unfortunately. Uh, but that's not really going to be a problem. I want to have a few different animations. So I'm going to go ahead and create a random function. It's going to give me a random number between, let's say, 0 and whatever value. In this case, it's going to be n. It's a nice little trick to do this. You can do math.round pass in math.random, multiply it by pretty much any number, and then just take the modulus of the value you passed in. This is going to give you a value of 0 through n, where n is the, uh, the maximum value. So for example, for n of 3, I'm going to get 0, 1, or 2. Uh, it's a nice little trick, if you haven't seen it before, to get a random number within a certain bound. The reason I want this is I'm going to have three different animation delays, which is going to make my ornaments make it look a little bit nicer going to go ahead and say n. Uh, this is going to be our classes. So I might just call this delay actually. We're going to create an array here and we're going to put in our animation delay. So it's going to be an array of classes of what we said before arbitrary properties. I'm going to say animation delay, animation delay. Then we're going to pass in the value here which is going to be a random number. So I'm just going to go ahead and, actually it's not going to be random. Let's go ahead and hard code it for now just to get something working. I'm going to start off with 200 milliseconds and we're going to have two more. We must hard code these, we cannot do this dynamically, otherwise Tailwind's JIT compiler is not going to be able to generate these unfortunately. So I'm going to have animation 200, animation 500, and finally we're going to have let's say animation of 800. This should be enough to get us going. We're now going to use our random number to choose the correct class and we're going to apply it down here. We can go ahead and use a string interpolation and just say delay and then pass in a random number uh, up to three. That's going to include zero, one, or two. Uh, if we did everything correctly, this should hopefully work. Unfortunately, I'm getting an error here. It's saying I cannot call this uh, because it's an array. We need to index it. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. Let's save it off and give it a try. Unfortunately, this is not working. It's still doing all of these at a different timing. So I guess I've made a mistake somewhere along the line animation delay, this does look pretty good to me. So the next thing I'm going to do to debug this uh, is simply go ahead and take a look at what's generated here. We have our class, which is what I expected. And we now need to see if Tailwind has managed to generate our class. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't. I guess I've made a mistake. Let's see if we can figure that one out really quickly. Animation delay 500. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. What I think we may need to do is add an extra class here, which is transition. Unfortunately, that didn't work either. So we have another mistake. Let's see if we can figure it out. Uh, rather than just me guessing, I'm just going to check exactly how I solve this. I have my answer over here. I normally don't do this, but it's really hard to remember all these Tailwind classes. So delay is up here, animation delay 200. Okay, what you need to do is use a colon, not an underscore. Uh, we could have actually figured that out from the documentation. It's right here. Either way, this should hopefully be working. And so it is, and that is looking pretty good. Uh, if you'd like to customize it, you obviously can. You can just go ahead and change these values to whatever you like. Uh, you can just play around with it a little bit. Uh, I don't really care too much as long as it's working for my purposes, which it is. The final thing we're going to do is add some variation to the position. And we're going to do a very similar technique to delay. I'm going to go ahead and just say position and we're going to create an array. I'm going to start off with pause x, which is going to be left and right. And we're going to again use these arbitrary classes. Let's go ahead and just create it now. I'm going to start off with negative m, uh, let's say my, or margin left. We'll start off with, let's say, 8. We're then going to do something very similar. I'm going to have another one with 4, another one with 0. Then we're going to have the opposite of 4 and 8, but in a positive direction. 
Let's go ahead now and see if we can apply this. It's going to be very similar to the delay function down here. Uh, instead of calling this though, we're going to say pause x, and then we're going to pass in our value. Instead of hard coding this, I'm just going to say pause x dot length, and that'll give me a bit more flexibility if I'd like to go ahead and add more classes in the future. Same thing here, we can say delay dot length. Let's save it off, and they are moving around a little bit. Uh, I think they're moving a little bit too far, so I'm going to make this one six instead. And that is looking pretty good. You can probably guess what's coming next. We're going to do exactly the same thing for Y, so I'm just going to say Y. And we're just going to go ahead and change all of these as well. Finally, I'm going to scroll down and change this one. Position Y is just going to be position Y random. And finally, we should hopefully be seeing uh, something a little bit better than this. I think I should be using position top instead of position Y. And there we go, it's a bit of a weird looking Christmas tree, but uh, you're gonna have to play around with these values and see what you can come up with. Either way, I am pretty happy with this. It is looking quite good, and you can see all of the logic is inside of this single component. Uh, it's even more encapsulated than using a style tag, it's really truly inlined here. Uh, you could definitely make this a little bit more interesting by playing around with these values, but for now, I am going to leave it here. There's a whole bunch of really nice things here about Tailwind. We saw a number of features such as the arbitrary value and the arbitrary properties. Definitely would encourage you to explore Tailwind a little bit more. Uh, there may be better ways of doing this as well. And I'm definitely interested in seeing what people come up with. This is one solution and I'm going to show you a drastically different one right now. And we're going to take a look at the author's actual solution. So over here, I'm just going to make this one a little bit bigger. And you can see the author has decided to go with a different approach instead of using Tailwind. He's actually using JavaScript to generate these values. So he's got offset X and Y, which is very similar to our position X and position Y. He's doing the random trick, and then he's going to go ahead and space them out correctly, uh, just to make sure those ornaments do not escape the bounds of the Christmas tree, which is what he describes here. He's also got the twinkle delay, which is a random number, which is just seeded by this. And he's written the animation by hand, which is just fine as well. Of course, this is going to offer you the full power of CSS. Finally, if we scroll up, he's hard coded the animation here, which is fine but he's delaying it by using the animation delay and just interpolating it here. Uh, neither approach is better or worse. It, it is interesting to see the different kind of ways people like to solve these problems. Right now, I'm pretty happy with Tailwind and I'm using it as much as I can, but uh, we will see in the future how well these Tailwind projects actually do scale because uh, I'm not too sure how resilient these would be to a refactor. Either way, pretty happy with this solution and I will see you in the next video.